Hey, Abbott, what time is it? It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. Yes, from Hollywood, it's the transcribed Abbott and Costello Show. So hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Luke Costello. Costello. Oh, Costello. Oh, Where did you catch that oh, terrible cold? I went out with Susan Miller last night in her car. Well, how did you get the cold? She made me walk home. I... Well, you better not work tonight. You better rest your voice. It's pretty weak. Oh, no. I'll yell my jokes twice as loud so everybody can hear. No, no, not that. Anything but that. How much can a human being? What a sneaky guy. <laughs> Well, this all says you're right. Always running out with girls, Costello. Do you want to be known as a guy who thinks of nothing but girls, girls, girls? Why? Is there another kind? I... <laughs> He's dope. You know nothing about women. That ain't my fault. I'm at that in-between age. In-between age? Yes. I'm too tall for keyholes and too short for transoms. <laughs> Costello, did your father ever tell you about the little birds and bees? Yes, he had to. He didn't know anything about girls. Uh, <laughs> what a dope. What are those gloves you always carry around with you? They belong to my old girl back in Patterson. Why don't you throw them away? What? Throw away Mary Boswell's gloves? There's too much sentiment attached to them, Abbott. Those are the gloves she wore the night she knocked out Tony Galinto in the fourth round. <laughs> Idiot. A moron, an imbecile, and a jerk. Isn't that marvelous, Abbott? I'm more versatile than Orson Welles. Oh, boy. You beef up this kind of talk, and the native Californians are not going to... They're going to hate you, really. Oh, yeah? You yeah. think so? Yeah, but they won't. You don't know those, uh, these uh, Californians. You don't even know what a native Californian is? Oh, yes, I do. A native Californian is a girl who comes from Topeka, Kansas. Marries a man from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Walks out on the street, gets hit by a car from Phoenix, Arizona, and gets a blood transfusion from a Boy Scout from Glendale. Well, if the California traffic is too heavy for you, why don't you move back to New York? Oh, it's much worse back there, Abbott. Oh, they even made a big movie about a guy walking across the street in New York without even getting hit by a taxi. Now, what was the name of the picture? A Miracle on 34th Street. <laughs> never, never mind the traffic. Where were you all afternoon? Abbott, I found a, a slow place. No kidding. It's called Arthur Murray's Dance Studio. The minute I walked in, a beautiful blonde grabbed me. We danced for two hours. Then we sat down and had tea and cakes. Then we danced for three more hours. Then I put my hat on to go, and she stopped me and said, How about some money? And what did you say? I said, Oh, I never take money from girls, but if you want to, you can send me a couple of ties. <laughs> you're, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. That's a dancing school. I got five dollars an hour. Uh, did the girl teach you any new dances? No, but I taught her one. It's my special dance for crowded dance halls. I call it the elevator dance. Elevator dance? Mm -hmm. What kind of steps do you use? No steps. <clears throat> Just grab the girl, stand in one place, and go up and down. <laughs> up and down. Albert. Oh, Ben! you said that. I bet that girl was glad to see you leave. She was not. She wanted, me, she wanted to make a date with me for tonight. She says, after the work. <laughs> she says, after work. <laughs> <laughs> I can't read the next slide. <laughs> Why am I lost? <laughs> she was not. She wanted to make a date with me for the night. She says afterwards she's a taxi dancer. <laughs> are, you gonna, are, you gonna, are you going to meet her? No, you can't have no fun dancing in a taxi. <laughs> but not leave you without a date tonight. No, I'll get one. How? Like I always do. Me and my dog stand out in front of the palladium and I whistle. If it's a dog, he gets her. If it's a girl, I get her. And if nobody comes, we go inside the dog and I dance together. Shame on you whistling as girls. Don't you know you, you get your face left that way? Yeah, and they get some pretty good dates, too. Hello, boys. Well, it's Susan Miller. There are policemen swarming all over the place. What's wrong? Well, they're looking for a peeping Tom that's been peeking in the dressing rooms of the girls at Earl Cal Theater. Mm -hmm. From the top of this building. Mm -hmm. oh, I'd hate to be the guy. <laughs> I'd hate to be that guy when the police catch up with him. You said it. <laughs> Excuse me a minute. Where are you going? 
I'm going to go out and sell my binoculars. You're just like a little kid. I think I'll get you a doll and some games. Just get me the doll. I'll think of my own games. <laughs> Costello, there's no way to talk to Susan. She's trying to be nice to you. I'm sorry, Susan. And if you come over to my house tonight, I'll shoot you a game of billiards. I've got a new billiard table. But I never played billiards. How do you play it? Are you sure you don't know how to play? No. Well, you stand close to the table like this. Then you put your arms around me like this. And I put my arms around you like this. <laughs> then you squeeze me tight like this. <laughs> then I squeeze. Wait a minute, Costello. Wait a minute. That's not the way you play billiards. It's not? No. How do you like that? Every year they change the rules. You know, I've got a better idea, Costello. A bunch of us girls are giving a friend of mine a shower tonight, and I'd like to have you come over. What for? Well, I want to show them what a real drip looks like. Go so on, Costello. giving away a washing machine on this show tonight. Oh, pardon me, that's Costello. I wish you hadn't said that, Mrs. Abbott. I was just about to remark how well you look in dark glasses. I'm not wearing dark glasses. No, but I am, and you look much better. Betty, what are you doing down here tonight? Well, I came down to see Roy Rogers. You know, I had a small bit in his last picture. Looks like the bit was too small. Pulls your mouth all out of shape. Waffle-headed windbag. If I was your mother, I'd give you poison. And if you was my mother, I'd take it. What? You sawed off, little shrimp. Me, a shrimp? Yes, Betty's right. You're a shrimp. Why, you only come up to her chin. Which one? Uh... Are you insinuating that I have a double chin? Double chin? You have so many chins, you look like a seven-layer coconut cake. <laughs> so insulted in all my life. Now, take it easy, honey. I'm ashamed that I ever came over to this place. I'm ashamed that I ever associated with this fat monster. Why, I'm even ashamed to be seen leaving here. I wish there was some way I could get out of here without being seen. I can fix that, Mrs. Abbott. Just step through this window and down the fire escape. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Costello. You I'll welcome. just climb down the fire escape. You're welcome. Costello, what happened? I just thought we ain't got no fire escape, right? <laughs> you shouldn't have done that, Costello, playing a trick like that on my wife. That's very dangerous. Yes, I never thought of that. It is dangerous. Certainly. Sure, she might have landed on an innocent bystander. Telegram for Luke Costello. Uh, wait a minute. Hey, you're pretty old to be a messenger boy, aren't you? Oh, hi, lad. I've been delivering telegrams around here for nine out of 40 years. I remember when this place used to be a livery stable. You mean, you mean there used to be horses and jackasses in here? Mm-hmm, yes. Just think, a livery stable. And now you and I are broadcasting from here, Abbott. Yep. Ain't changed much. <laughs> uh, here's a telegram for you, Costello. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, Costello, he's an old man. Give him a tip. Okay, Mr. Messenger, how much of a tip do you usually get for delivering a telegram? Well, uh, the average tip is five dollars. Okay, here's five dollars. Ah, thanks. I want to tell you that in all the 40 years I've been delivering telegrams, you're the first fella to ever come up to the average. So long. Well, all right, come on, Costello, read the telegram. Okay. Abbott. What? It's from my Uncle Mike. He's been up in Alaska prospecting for the past five years. Brother, is this good news? Well, what does it say? Dear Louie, struck gold. Need your help. Come at once and bring Bud Abbott. Signed, Uncle Mike. Come on, Abbott. We're rich. Well, at last, Costello, this is the break we've been waiting for. Gold, gold. Uncle Mike has found a bonanza. I hope he'll split it with us. Why? Mm, I love bonanza splits. <laughs> Forget about the bonanzas. <laughs> Uncle Mike is in Alaska, isn't he yet? Yes. Well... No, certainly I know him. He's my uncle Mike, ain't he? <laughs> no, 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 you dummy. I'm talking about Nome in Alaska. I'd know him any place. 
I'd know him in Paris, New Jersey. Costello. I'd know him in Chicago, and the fake any place. Well, forget New Jersey. Your Uncle Mike is in Alaska, isn't he? Yes. Well, when you get to Alaska, you'll get to know him. I don't have to go to Alaska to get to know him. I've known my Uncle Mike all my life. Marcella, I'm not talking about know him. I said no, know him in Alaska. You have to get to Alaska to get to know him. That's the Yukon. That's the what? Yukon, Yukon. Icon what? Not, <laughs> not icon what? Yukon. Oh, you mean I can't, but you can? Now you got it. Costello, this is no time to start a routine. Uncle Mike needs us. He needs us bad up there to help him get that gold. Now, this is a chance of a lifetime. What do we do, Abbott? Well, you know, we've got to get to Alaska as fast as we can. And as soon as we get off the boat, we'll have to start mushing. Uh, what did you say? I said you and I will have to start mushing. Abbott, don't you think I'm a little too young for you? Get him out of here! Costello, come on, let's get packed. We're going to Alaska and sharing your uncle's uh, mine. That gold mine he struck, remember? Yes. Uh, it's going to be wonderful. We may wind up with two million dollars a piece. You know that? Abbott, what would you do with two million dollars? First, I'd buy a used car. And what would you do with the other million? <laughs> you, you please talk sense. Remember, in Alaska, we may run into a lot of icebergs. I know all about icebergs. I used to go steady with a girl who was an iceberg. Now, wait a minute. How can... <laughs> How could a girl be an iceberg? An iceberg is a great big cold thing that you couldn't even budge. That's her. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. What's that bottle you're putting in your bag? <laughs> I beg your pardon? What's that bottle you're putting in your bag? Some perfume. I'm taking along in case I meet a beautiful Eskimo girl. It's called New Dot. What's New Dot? Nothing much. What's new with you? I... <laughs> you dummy. I don't know why your Uncle Mike picked you to share his gold and called you his favorite nephew. There are three reasons, Abbott, why I'm his favorite nephew. First, I'm honest. Second, I'm intelligent. And third, I'm his only nephew. Come on. I don't think you will do it. Yeah, come on. <laughs> We're off for Alaska and gold. Oh, uh, Costello, it's, it's freezing here in Alaska. Boy, listen that wind. Well, come on, Costello. We're going to find Uncle Mike. We'll need a dog sled. Look, there's Ignorant Ignat, the used sled dealer. Ah, oh, gentlemen, what can I do for you? Well, we're traveling north. What kind of a sled would you suggest for us? Oh, that's our radio special, a sled with a horn. The horn is $5 extra. Uh, just listen to it. I'll take it. Good. One sled horn, $505. You said it was $5. If five dollars for the horn and five hundred dollars to join the musicians' union. <laughs> now, uh, here's a nice sled with plenty of extras. White wall blubber tires, sleep covers, fog lights, headlights, parking lights, spotlights, and a searchlight. What's the searchlight for? So you can find the switch to put on the other light. <laughs> we'll take it. How about some uh, dogs? Yes, you can't fool me on dogs. <laughs> you know, Mr. Costello... I don't like to say this, but I don't believe you ever drove a dog team. Oh, is that so? I love dogs. I'll never forget the time my dog's spotty saved my life. It's a sad story. Would you like to hear it? No. Then I'll tell it to you. <laughs> I was out in the Arctic waste with my little dog's body. We were lost. Starving. No food for ten days. I couldn't stand it any longer. I had to eat. I had to eat. So I ate spotty. <laughs> Every last bit till there was nothing left. Just his little bone. And that was the saddest touch of all. I thought to myself, my wooden spotty have enjoyed those bones. Well, we're wasting time. We've got to find Uncle Mike and his gold. We'll take this dog sled, Mr. Ignick. Come on, Costello. We're off on the trail of gold. Come on. <laughs> Costello, can't 
can't you make those dogs go any faster? I keep yelling, giddy up, and they just turn and sneer in my face. Giddy up. The word is mush. Okay, they keep sneering in my mush. Oh. <laughs> hey. Costello, that's a Los Angeles bus. What's it doing up here in Alaska? It must be the bus that runs to the Los Angeles city limits. <laughs> Seven saloon. Let's go in and get warm. Come on, Abbott. Frozen. Abbott. What? I don't like the looks of that saloon. There's a tough guy hanging out in front of it. Well, lots of guys hang out in front of saloons. On the end of a rope? <laughs> Come on, hop off that sled and let's go in. Hey, look at all the Eskimos in here, Costello. And they're all dressed alike. I, I wonder how you can tell a girl Eskimo from a boy Eskimo. Abbott, if the Eskimos ain't complaining, why should you? Zane, there's one of those Alaskan dance hall girls. She's beautiful. Mmm, look at that dress she's wearing. It's made out of gold pieces. Yeah, it sure is. Look, she's got $5 gold pieces around the bottom, $10 gold pieces around the hips, $20 gold pieces around the waist. Quit staring at it. Anybody would think you never saw a $50 gold piece before. Costello, <laughs> when we find your Uncle Mike, we'll have plenty of gold, too. You'll be rolling in gold. Well. Did I hear you say go? Come here, Chevy. I want to kiss you. Ooh, I'm Maisie. I'm woozy. Uh, you know, I'm crazy about you. Why? Because I'm a woman and you're a man. Do you understand? I'm a woman and you're a man. Well, what are you going to do about it? Don't you think it's a little too late to do anything about it now? <laughs> that fella has no gold. He may have lots of gold when, he, when we find his Uncle Mike, but right now he's broke. What do I care? I want him. We don't need money. We can live on love. Kisses for breakfast. Most kisses for lunch. Yes, yes, go on. Nothing, nothing but kisses for dinner. You're going to live on nothing but kisses? Abbott, do you think that would make you happy? Abbott, we may not be happy, but we'll be the skinniest couple in Alaska. Come on, Costello. We've got to find your Uncle Mike and get that goal. Say goodbye to Maisie. So you're really going, my love. Costello, I'll be waiting for you to return. I live in a little house 12 miles from here with my mother. Maisie, may I kiss you goodbye? If you kiss me, I'll call my mother. But you just said your mother is 12 miles away. I know, but if you kiss me right, she could get here before you're through. <laughs> Maisie, I'm going to give you a kiss that will be felt on the other side of the world. <laughs> How do you like that? I didn't think I could do it. Come on, Castello, we've got to find Uncle Mike. <laughs> Costello, this is where that old prospector told us your Uncle Mike was. Hey, look at that sign. It says Alaskan Jail. There's Uncle Mike looking out through the bars. Hey, Mike, we're here. Costello and I are here to help you dig the gold. Dig what gold? You said in your telegram that you struck gold. What are you doing in jail? Sure I struck gold. That's why they put me in jail. But they can't put you in jail for striking gold. The gold I struck was Sam Gold. Sam Gold, the chief of police. You gotta get me out of here. Never mind him, Abbott. Get me out of here. Susan Miller with Matty Malnick's orchestra point the way to the people's choice. Love is just around the corner. Just around the corner, any cozy little corner. Love is just around the corner where I'm around you. I'm a sentimental mourner and a wouldn't be forlorner. When you keep me on the corner, just wait to see you. Milo was noted for her charm. Strictly between us, I'm cuter than Venus. And what's more, I've got on. Let's go in the corner. Any cozy little corner. 
morning. Love is just around the corner when I'm around you. And now here are Abbott and Costello with a final word. Well, your Uncle Mike certainly turned out to be a bust. <laughs> Just like the rest of your family. Oh, I don't know. My Uncle Henry is a pretty smart guy. He once tried to think about a name for a candy bar. He thought and thought, and he couldn't get a name. And one day the phone rang. It was his wife. She said, oh, Henry, drop dead. And then and there he got the name for the candy bar. What did he call the candy bar? Drop dead. Drop <laughs> dead. Everybody's coming.